uh, you know, I like uh, being down close to the people, so this is good. This is good. Uh, first of all, uh, Pastor Mel, thank you for introducing me as a lawyer, but uh, I'm not. And that's why I understand the Constitution. <laughs> Uh, my name is Douglas V. Gibbs, and I've known as Mr. Constitution. I actually have six classes in four counties. So on Thursday mornings, uh, I am up in Beaumont, the Thursday nights in Carlsbad. On Tuesday mornings, I'm actually not too far from here in Fallbrook. So uh, I've got a list of all my classes at my table in the foyer if you uh, want to check it out before you take off. And I've been teaching classes on the U.S. Constitution since 2008. Uh, I've been uh, on uh, internet radio slash podcast since 2007. I've been on AM radio since uh, 2010, and I'm actually uh, have two radio programs, one on KMET in Riverside County, and then I'm on Cape Praise here in San Diego County on Saturday nights at 9 o'clock. And you can also, there like all of the different podcast networks, iHeart and TuneIn and all of those, Spotify, I'm on all of those with that show. Um, and. Uh, you know, I, I'm glad I'm here and I get to kick this off because you're getting ready to hear three candidates and there's three reasons why it's important to listen to what candidates have to say. And I'm gonna kind of go over that with you, but I wanna thank you all for being here. This is a full room, this is good. And I, you know, I see a lot of familiar faces from uh, the Beaumont, or not Beaumont, but a Fallbrook class and the Carlsbad class. I'm glad you guys are here, good to see you. And uh, let me uh, start with this. Uh, how, You've heard of BLM, right? Yeah. Uh, Bureau of Land Management. Right, that's exactly what I was thinking. Uh, you remember uh, Ammon Bundy, right? Ammon Bundy was right, by the way. Uh, so BLM, Bureau of Land Management, unconstitutional uh, organiz uh, agency, by the way. And then we got Black Lives Matter. So we have BLM, when we hear those three letters, we think of either the Bureau of Land Management or Black Lives Matter. I'm going to give you a third one. BLM stands for Because Liberty Matters. Yeah. And I'm going to go through a little bit of this. I want to give you a little history. I want you to understand where we're from. Because the foundation of this country is all about liberty. And it's all about the foundation that was built along the way. So let's talk a little bit about that. So we all know the story, right? 1620, the pilgrims arrived from Plymouth. And, uh, what, 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 why is that funny, Howard? Because, oh, we're being told that uh, that isn't the start of America. Don't worry, we'll get to that. <laughs> I'm actually writing a book about that. Uh, I call it the 1607 Project, the Challenge of 1619 Project. So, 1620, our, our pilgrims land at Plymouth, and in the beginning, they actually chose a system that wasn't exactly what we have today, but they learned from it, and they, and they grew, and they... And they uh, really got the English colonies in New England going. And Jamestown in 1607, 1620 was the pilgrims. And they left uh, Britain because of persecution, religious persecution. They came here for religious freedom because liberty matters. And as they proceeded and they moved forward and they developed this society and the settlers, they were very godly people and they were in church and all this other stuff. And as time passed, that faith kind of started to dwindle a little bit. And in 1734, in 1734, there was an individual uh, by the name of Jonathan Edwards that was kind of watching what was going on. And he was seeing that the, uh, vir the, the virtuous nature of the people of the colonies was not what it should be. The uh, greatest generation, you know, those settlers had passed away. Now we got the grandkids, the great grandkids of the settler, the original settlers and other new settlers and the churches are kind of empty and the, and, and the message is not a virtuous society, it's something else and Jonathan Edwards decides this isn't right so he begins, begins to preach a more wholesome message and a message that resonates and re makes everybody realize that they're off target. And because when you're off target, you don't realize sometimes you're in tyranny. But when you're on target, when you're immersing, when you immerse yourself with a genuine article, you recognize when there's tyranny. And he began to preach this message at his church in Northampton, Massachusetts. And before long, his church grew. And the pews became full and the town began to do better because they began to realize what was going wrong and 
began to correct things politically and, and in their culture. And before long, the other towns are watching Northampton and they're thinking, wow, I don't know what's going on there. That's pretty good. And the pastors start realizing it's because of Jonathan Edwards and what he's preaching, so they start preaching. And before long, we have 100 communities in Massachusetts that are going through revival. And then a guy named George uh, Whitfield hears about it. And he's from Britain, and he comes all the way to the colonies, and he listens to Jonathan Edwards speak, and he said, this is an amazing message. This needs to be spread. These embers that are on fire in Massachusetts need to be spread throughout the colonies. So George Whitfield says, you know what? I'm going to preach this. I'm going to spread this message from the north end to the south end of the colonies. And Jonathan Edwards actually helped them back. And... They did this, and they created what was called the Great Awakening, and they did this. Why, BLM? Because liberty matters. And for 40 years, this Great Awakening spread, and, and people began to realize, you know what? what we're, what's going on under the bridge right now is not necessarily a good thing after all. We see the tyranny. We recognize it. Because we have now immersed ourselves in a genuine article and we know what's wrong. We see it's wrong. I used to be a, a banker long ago. Don't hate me. And I handled a lot of money and I handled the genuine article all the time. And so when a counterfeit came across my hands, I knew what it was the moment I felt it. Because I knew what the genuine article felt like. And the moment that you, when you handle and, or you're around nothing but the genuine article, you know faith freedom, liberty, you know, the genuine article. When you're around the genuine, genuine article all the time, you recognize the counterfeits. Amen. The fakes are easy to spot. Amen. And that's what was happening during that great awakening. And it led to a lot of rumblings going on in these colonies. And in 1761, there was this uh, thing called uh, the Ritz of Assistance. The British, they had decided that the colonies needed to pay their fair share for uh, the French and Indian War, and so they're going to start taxing them on everything. And so the colonists, being you know good British subjects, began to buy French and products and other products. They wouldn't have to pay the tax. And so the British says, "Okay, fine. You can only buy British products. Period. That way you pay the tax. And we're going to have a writ of assistance. That's a general warrant. In other words, our soldiers can search your home anytime they want, searching for any contraband products that are not British." And we're going to rip up your floorboards and tear the place apart. And there's nothing you can do about it because the general warrant has been issued. And a guy named James Otis quit his job as governor and says, I'm not going to enforce this junk. And then he stood up in front of a court and he said, I believe in freedom and low taxes and this isn't it. And he gave a speech about how a man's home is his castle. And he stood before the court and he told them, this is tyranny. And he did so because liberty matters. And there was this young 25-year-old man in that courtroom watching James Otis. And his name was John Adams. And he took that message to heart. And he joined with other colonists who were kind of radical from the government's point of view. You know, with their Christianity and their think thoughts of having a freer society and low taxes, who do they think they are? And they worked together and they stood against this. They began to and they began to rally and protest. And you know, they kind of had a tea party at one point in Boston and you know stuff like that, where they kind of threw all kinds of tea into the harbor. And they joined together, and what it led to was a revolution. And a revolution that led to independence, a declaration of independence. And John Adams, years later in 1818, when he looked back upon it, and he was asked about the American Revolution, he said, the American Revolution did not start on Lexington Green in 1775 with that first shot. It did not begin in the battlefields. It began in the hearts and the minds of the colonists. As they met and they talked together and they spent time together and they congregated in the meeting halls and the churches and the pubs. And this boiled up and they demanded change because liberty matters. 
And they moved forward with this war and they wrote a Declaration of Independence. And during that time period, after the Boston Tea Party, before Lexington and Green, there was actually a man, a guy named Patrick Henry, that was so enthused about what was going on and said, we need to be fighting for this. We need to stand behind this. And he stood up in front of a Virginia convention. He said, give me liberty or give me death because liberty matters. And that war was fought. And, they put, and in the Declaration of Independence, at the final line, it says, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence. In other words, they knew God was on their side. Amen. We mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. And every one of those signers of that Declaration of Independence, they paid a price with their lives, with their fortunes, their family, their homes. And one of them, his name was William Williams. And when the war wasn't going very well, William Williams was at a gathering and he overheard another gentleman in the room saying, gosh, the way the war's going, I'm sure glad I didn't sign that Declaration of Independence. Because, you know, those guys are gonna be hung. And William Williams, Williams spoke up and said, you, sir, by not doing your duty for liberty should be the one hung. Because liberty matters. And as this war came to a completion and the blood of these warriors and these patriots soaked the American soil and we faced off with the greatest military power in the world at the time with a bunch of farmers and storekeepers even a few lawyers and doctors and such shooting their guns. And at first they were just an angry mob, by the way. We lost eight of the first 11 major battles because they were just an angry mob. But then they came together and they united and they organized and they won this war. And in 1783 at the Treaty of Paris, we were recognized by the rest of the world as a sovereign country and the rest of the world was in awe because they didn't think it could happen. And I don't know if they said this, but they should have. They said, we won because liberty matters. Amen. Yeah. And then as the time passed, they realized that the government they had established under the Articles of Confederation during the war was not complete. It wasn't as perfect as they thought it was. In fact, in the preamble, it says the reason for the Constitution is for a more perfect union, a more complete union. And they wrote this Constitution because liberty matters. They spent this time during the summer in Philadelphia because liberty mattered. And here's the thing that's very interesting. If you read the preamble, and I want you all, when you get the chance, I got plenty of pocket constitutions in the back there. You all can have one or two or three. I got plenty. And what you'll notice in the preamble is it says that, yeah, they wrote this for themselves. You, you, you've heard about, you've heard of this, right? We're, we're told that these guys are just a bunch of old white racist guys that did it for their wealth and their own power, right? We hear that all the time. In fact, they tell us something very different in the preamble. What they say is the reason for writing this constitution, for setting up this system that is going to secure the blessings of liberty. Secure the blessings of liberty. Who gives blessings? Anybody tells you God's not in the Constitution, they don't know what they're talking about. The word G-O-D may not be there, but God is throughout that document. And a pastor friend told me one time that the word G-O-D is also not in the book of Esther in the Old Testament, but guess what? God's there. <laughs> So God is throughout the Constitution, blessings of liberty, and it says to ourselves and our posterity, to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. And one of the things that I've noticed and I've learned about the Founding Fathers is emphasizing words was important to them, but they didn't italicize. I mean, your handwriting, for God's sake, so they tell us, yeah, the italics is probably not going to look right. Italics have actually been around since about 8500 8, Rome. But no, what they did is they capitalized words when they wouldn't normally be capitalized for emphasis. And if you look at where it says to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, the word ourselves is lowercase. 
And the word posterity is capitalized. In other words, what they're saying is, we wrote this to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves, yes, but especially to our posterity, capital P, those not yet born. In other words, in that war, when they fought and they died, or many of them died, and the ones that survived come together in the Constitution, they did it all for you. Capital P, posterity, and of course, because liberty matters. And as time passed and as our country grew, we fought a war amongst ourselves even, a war between the states, brother against brother. And once again, the blood of patriots of this country spilled upon American soil. And it was fought because liberty matters. And then as time passed and we innovated and we became the leading inventor country with inventors in the world. And we skyrocketed from being a third world country to a leader in the world. And then when liberty was under threat in Europe by empires and Nazi Germany, Imperial Japan, Mussolini, or we go back to World War I with Germany, Austria, Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire. And our young people, young Americans, answered the call and their blood was also spilled on foreign shores. Why? Because liberty matters. Not just to us, but to everyone. And then as we, as we went through history, Korea, Vietnam, Middle East, a Cold War. And in this Cold War, because liberty matters, we had a president who stood up and said, tear down that wall. And that wall came down because liberty matters and because we led the way because we were leaders in the world and because all because a group of men who was willing to put it all on the line came together way back in 1787 to write a constitution and way back in 1776 to write a declaration of independence now I'm excited to give you that message, but I'm not done. Because there's just a little bit more. Because see, we have these three candidates here talking to you today. And I'm jazzed to get to hear them. Actually, one of them I've heard speak before. Let's see if the encore is as good as the first time. I'm not gonna tell you who, you gotta guess, you gotta figure it out. The other two I've not heard before, but I wanna know what they have to say. And I want you to pay attention to what they have to say. I want you to pay close attention because we need to make sure the right people are in office. Amen. Why? Because liberty, matters. because liberty matters. And if these men that are speaking today are those men that believe the same, we need to support them. We need to be out there for them. We need to be behind them. Amen. Because liberty matters, and that's, what, that's a part of what being an American is. Because it's all about liberty and our godly foundation. Without that, we're not America. And they're trying to take that away from us. They're telling you this isn't a godly country. And they're telling you that this liberty thing is, why, it's antiquated. I never, heard, I never thought liberty could become antiquated. Something old and forgotten that doesn't work anymore. It doesn't work because they haven't been following the Constitution and because we, we don't have the right people in office. Right. I believe tonight you're going to hear some of the people that are the right people for office. Yep. But I want you to pay close attention and I want you to give, their, give, give them your support if that's the case. Why? Because liberty matters. Thank you. Thank you.